Hey art friends. Um, so my name is Kristen and I'm the gallery director at the Octagon Center for the Arts. Um, I wanted to give everybody a chance to see the Outrage for Change pop-up show that's currently happening in downtown Ames on Main Street and just off. Um, we had a lot of people who donated to the crowdfunding campaign that probably don't live in the area and I wanted to make sure that they had a chance to see the show too. So um, I'm a party of one this morning and I don't have any way to carry notes with me. If you have, um, if any of the art really strikes you and you want to learn more about the artists, you can find all of that information on our website. Um, their bios, their statements, um, images of their art, their Instagram handles. And um, this is going to be a kind of sloppy um, look at the artwork that's down here on Main Street, but I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to wear my mask. It might be a little muffled sometimes, um, but here we go. Okay, we're starting at the Octagon Community Gallery. And the first artist is Jordan Brooks. And Jordan's had a kind of special feature that he wanted you to participate in. So welcome to the stage. And if you do the work and you get down real low, you can take a look and read his message in there. So he says, your performative allyship is not needed. Read that again. Action is needed. Continuous action. I see you acting and I see how you are living. Your lifestyle does not match your social media persona and the evening chanting in the streets. I see how you talk in your home. I see how you think and behave at work. I see how you raise your children. I see how you excuse your friends and family's anti-black and racist behavior. I see who you elect to govern. I see how you vote to maintain privilege. After the curtain falls, who will you be? Will you continue to position your whole self in the uncomfortable position of social justice, racial justice, and liberation? Will you interrogate your whiteness? Will you admit that whiteness in the US is rooted in the subjugation, dehumanization, and eradication of black people, indigenous people, and people of color? If so, you just might be doing something. Focus on doing the life work of an accomplice in the fight and not an ally. We'll say you were an ally when the battle is won. For now, do the living, do the work. Okay, here in the Octagon Gallery shop window, we have Cub Stevens. Across the street at KHOI Community Radio, we have Miradu Joseph, and the glare is pretty bad on these, so please check out our website and you'll be able to see better images of his work. It's just beautiful. At 
Design on Main Gallery, we have this piece called I'm Too... I'm Too Full to Feel by Cameron Gray. It's kind of interesting to see the reflection of myself inside the piece. because of the glare he's got it chock full stuffed with logs there's a small tire some foundation tiles charred logs burlap sacks paper fabric at worldly goods we have justin roberson he's got three pieces here can get this without the glare. He also has a poem. It says, if proper decorum is submission when my life is on the line and still on my knees I die, tell me, who should, who should I complain to when I awake dead? Around the edges it says, arrest the cops who murdered Brianna Taylor. At Photosynthesis, we have Jamila Johnson. behind me that's a little loud but at Della Vitti we have Juliana Jones her piece is quite large you can see the two figures on the top it says speak truth hear truth see truth we'll go around and look at the bottom people from her family, friends, and community create these smaller figures for her. On the inside, we are made of the same. One heartbeat at a time we live. Salon. We have three pieces by Siri Casso. noisy truck again and the glare is pretty bad but we have this beautiful piece at downtown Delhi by Francisco Sanchez Ordaz At 
Lindsay Lou's Gifts and Home Decor. We have this piece by Helen Barton. The quote says, we are never assured of justice without a fight by Angelo Y. Davis. At Skunk River Cycles, we have these pieces by Ani Wright. The quote says, you can't separate peace from freedom because no one can beat peace unless he has his freedom. I'm sorry, be at peace unless he has his freedom by Malcolm X. This poster says, Liberty for all. I believe in liberty for all, the space to stretch their arms and their souls, the right to breathe and the right to vote, the freedom to choose their friends, enjoy the sunshine and ride on the railroads, uncursed by color, thinking, dreaming, working as they will in a kingdom of beauty and love by W.E.B. Du Bois. At Gilger Designs, we have Amara Agba, this piece, the caption below says, Future Revolutionary. Future Revolutionary represents how children of color are forced to grow up as the voice of their race and have to be the ones to be affected by and speak up about racism from a young age. Depending on how or where you grow up, it can cause conflicts with your peers, with your own identity, and take a toll on your mental health. And the second piece by Amara at Gilger Designs. And the caption with this one says, we see. During one of my years in high school, we were reading the poem Incident by County Cullen. My white teacher clarified she was going to use the N word. Her reasoning being something like showing the impact of the poem. To this day, I don't believe her saying it was really necessary. We all saw the poem projected. We all knew what the word meant and what it sounded like. And in the situation, I felt powerless, too worried to ask if she wouldn't. Once riding in old Baltimore, heart filled, head filled with glee, I saw a Baltimorean keep looking straight at me. Now I was eight and very small, and he was no whit bigger. And so I smiled, but he poked out his tongue and called me the N-word. I saw the whole of Baltimore from May until December. Of all the things that happened there, that's all that I remember. County Cullen. At the bottom, they say, ironically, looking back at this incident, the only thing I remember from the class period is the scene I painted. At Fringe Salon, we have Zachary Frazier. Zachary's also a graphic designer. Can you see some of his prints on the inside? It says, inequalities are by design. So they might be redesigned. Morning Bell Coffee Roasters, we have a painting by Jamie Malone.
Okay. Have a train going behind me now, so a little bit loud, but at a VEC design build, we have Brandon Spencer. Public Library we have Jill Wells and this piece is a diptych and it's quite large keep myself out of the frame. To get a better look at some of these pieces, please visit our website because they're very detailed. This is more of Jill's artwork. 